Hello everyone! Today I want to show you my process of painting a little different watercolor portrait. I will be talking about the mask and fluid I tested in this painting and since this was the last bottle that I bought for the review, expect my next video to be summarizing my findings. If you enjoy watercolor painting and everything related to that, consider subscribing so you don't miss new content from me. I chose this portrait based on a photo that I saw on Pinterest. Lately I have been admiring colorful portraits of women of all ages and skin colors decorated with traditional jewelry and embroidery. I could paint them for months, every single day. These visuals inspire me a lot. At the same time, I find it harder to paint loosely when there is a lot of objects in the composition that are sharply defined, such as jewelry. I find this harder to find a way to include it in a painting, but in a way that doesn't make them overly important, because with portrait paintings like this, what I want the viewer to notice first is definitely the face and all the colorful arrangements should go second and work in some sort of concert. I don't think I achieved that in this one yet, but you know, practice will probably solve that. I plan to make a series of paintings with a similar topic so that I can practice more. With flowers it is easier for me to make them loose, but maybe that's just me being familiar with the subject, I don't know. Anyhow, I love the entire color scheme that I used in this one and it was heavily inspired by the photo though and I will post the link to my Pinterest board including this picture in the description. What you're seeing now is me trying to place the very first layer of watercolor paint wet in wet. When I'm starting the painting, lately I do not try to color within the lines of my sketch, but rather these first blurry patches of color help me to establish the overall tonal and color structure of the entire painting. I try to place the colors as closely to the desired final result as I can. I would compare it to like trying to paint it all in one layer. I know that there will be more layers of paint following, but this approach will help me to see the entire painting right from the start and helps me to stay true to the original intention until the very end. As mentioned, I can always develop sharper and more defined areas later on in following layers of paint working wet on dry, but I try to have every area covered right from the start. It looks like a blurry mess at first but I do not worry about that too much. I work on a paper that actually allows both lifting and layering, so if I accidentally cover up something that I wish to make lighter later on, I can lift the pigment off the page. Yeah, the page won't be completely white ever again. You would have to use masking fluid for that, but for the purposes of making something slightly lighter, that works very well. The technique has proven to be very effective and works well for me. Oh, and the paper is Kenzon Moulin de Roi. You can always find all my materials in the description. Here is the dry first layer and now it's time to start developing the face. I'm using my new Sennelier watercolor paints. I bought them a few weeks ago and I already showed you what shades I bought and made swatches in the last art supplies haul linked down below if you missed it. I am not ready to make a full-on review. I need to paint with them a little more to be able to really tell what they are like and to discover ups and downs but I can share first impressions and those are amazing. The colors are vibrant, the texture of the paint is light and I have no trouble diluting them with water to get a nice watery pool of paint. And the flow is incredible but if you like to keep your watercolor under control you might not like this aspect as much as I do. I personally love it because my approach is more painterly and less controlled. Also one thing you notice immediately is how well and easy they rewet. Rewetting of the dry paint is is often an issue even with my favorite Daniel Smith paints and with Sennelier it doesn't seem to be a problem at all. First painting with these made me want to use them more. Last bottle of mask and fluid I purchased to test out was the Windsor & Newton one. They have white and also transparent fluid and this was the transparent one. I used it years ago but it was twice as expensive as Pebble, which I currently use in workshops. But transparent fluids always are a little more useful, especially when you're placing it over already painted areas like I do. There is a higher risk of ripping something this way 
even when working on cotton because when you're removing the fluid it often takes off some of the paint and can create a weird texture sometimes but you'll see that soon when I'll be removing the fluid but overall this particular masking fluid is very easy to apply and you can see the color underneath because of the transparency this is how the color fades when it's dry and now I can comfortably paint over it. The paint underneath is being preserved. But let's first finish the face. This part of the process for me is the most tedious. It's not as much fun as the rest of the painting and it needs to be exactly right because the entire painting depends on it. The face had beautiful warmth and I love the red cheeks. It allowed me to use quite a strong red color but it also has a lot of really deep, almost black shades shadows that asked for smooth transitions and it took me a couple of tries to achieve that. I mentioned in my last video that March has not been the best month for me and my family. Kids were ill and I was too for a few days. Since then I have very little energy and my voice still doesn't feel like mine. It affected my work because between different stages of my latest paintings there were breaks even a couple of days long. I like watercolor medium because it's very suitable for letting me seal a certain emotion before I stop feeling it or a specific idea that I have about a certain painting and when I'm forced to take such long breaks I then feel disconnected and that's what happened here too sadly. Ideally I would finish a piece within two or three days, this one from the start to finish was more than two weeks. this hairstyle was a nightmare. It was not really very visible on the reference and I didn't even quite understand the way those hairs were sealed. That always affects your results when trying to paint something realistic if you don't quite understand like how it works. So I tried to create a shape that would look appropriate and I ended up with something that looked rather like a helmet. So I made a decision to have the hair blur into the background and it was a good one. I applied a few loose brush strokes and deepened the entire background and this effect made the face pop even more. Sometimes I need to create additional highlights even in the hair and to do that I often use damp brush. I just rub the paper with it and then leave the released pigment with a tissue. The final highlight is very subtle and often looks exactly what I need to give a certain part of the painting more depth. Let's remove the masking fluid now. I use an eraser for this and Winsor & Newton fluid formed quite a solid cake on top of my paper and it was a while before I removed it all, but it wasn't as hard to remove as the Schminky Blue masking fluid that I used in the other painting a couple of videos ago. On the other hand, when masking fluid is this solid after drying, it often takes care of your edges and they stay exactly as you drew them. This was one of the things that I disliked about the cheaper Pebble masking fluid. Not hard to remove, but when masking fluid is too soft even after drying, it sometimes doesn't hold the edges like you drew them, but makes them look shaken. Then you have to work them out and fix it, depending on how important is the shape that you masked. But when I mask these areas that represent jewels, it's something with a clearly defined shape and then I appreciate if the masking fluid really holds my shapes until the moment that I'm ready ready to remove it. Lastly, your results can be different when using heavily textured papers. The masking fluid then has to cope with the texture and that can also influence the edges. My paper is cold press, which is usually medium sized texture, but Canzon Moulin du Roi has smoother texture even in its cold pressed variant. Mm.
Final touches included metallic watercolor paint as well as some white gouache to draw in bolder highlights. And I wanted to use a bit of the colored pencils to give the color a little pop, but now when editing the video I can see that this was not needed at all and will probably erase those last pencil marks from the painting. I think that decision came from the disconnect, but at least it's not permanent. Pencils are great and you simply remove them if you don't like the result and that is all the more reason to experiment with them. If you enjoyed this little video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in a new one soon. Have a great day! Mm -hmm.